It's a pretty exciting day on the board because I am starting to install this, which is the home kit from Digital Training Boards. Basically to put LEDs on my board and be able to set up loads of cool problems and circuits and remember them, which is a problem when you're getting old. And so the first step is to find a place for the screen and the frames of the unit. I just decided to put it down here next to the wall on the left, so it should be easily be able to select the problems for later on the board. Let's see if it works. Oh, there we go! So it looks like it's been preloaded with a really early photo of our board by the guys from DTB. Okay, I just need to tidy up the cables down there and then start drilling holes in the wall. So, the actual computer is all installed and working. I've tested the lights, everything's fine. The only thing left to do is to drill some holes. <laughs> and this is the scary bit. There we go. Then you clean up the holes. Afterwards with a little bit of sandpaper. Start poking LED through from the back. No turning back now. Okay, so eventually, after about what? Three and a half hours of constant drilling, all of the holes are drilled. Whew. Time to start putting some LEDs in. The first thing you need to do when you're organising your LEDs is to divide your board up into these hypothetical invisible columns. You want to look at your board, try and divide it up so you've got a roughly equal amount of holes in each column. And that means that some of the columns might look a little bit wider than the others. So you can see here my column A is quite a bit wider just because the hole density on the side of the board is a lot less than it is in the middle of the board. You need to take your total amount of LEDs and then divide that by your number of columns. So I've got around 270 LEDs which need to light up about 250 holes. So what I've done, I've split them up into 11 columns of 24 LEDs to give me 264 LEDs. They need to be plugged in. Whew. All right, here we go. So we have the first little LED, the second, third, fourth, and then a big long string that still needs to go in. And we're just trying to keep ourselves organized, making sure that we get to the top, then back to the bottom of the board with the same amount of LEDs. So we're moving slightly left, slightly right, but generally trying to keep it all in logical columns. And hopefully that way we'll end up with a nice mirrored board that works all the way across. Time will tell. Uh, I've run out of LEDs on this first chain, so we've got to get another set. That's connected. After attaching this connector together, which powers on the next string of LEDs, you're left with these two connectors free, which is there for a booster cable to come in and add a little bit more power, because as the string of LEDs gets longer and longer and longer, the lights are going to get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. As you can see, this set of LEDs is blinking a bit, so I'm pretty sure I need to do something with the power booster cables. But I will figure out that tomorrow because I'm pretty tired and I fancy a cup of tea. All in all, really, really psyched with how it looks and uh, pretty excited to get climbing on it. One of the problems that you might have if you've got a lot of LEDs is that as you get toward the end of the string of LEDs, the LEDs start to dim. And so the solution to this problem are these booster cables that come direct from the control box. So we find the negative cable, the positive cable, and now everything's super bright. Another thing that I got are these little acrylic lens caps that you can put into the holes that you've drilled. Um, to cover up the LEDs and it helps disperse the light a little bit more evenly as well. So you can see here is a hold with an LED in that has no lens cap and here is the hold with the lens cap and it just looks a lot cleaner and it also works a lot better. If you were just setting a regular board that was non-symmetrical you basically just install the LEDs in this kind of snake pattern assigning each hold to an LED the problem is when you have a symmetrical board like we have here, it's a little bit more complicated because you need to make sure that every LED on this side of the board corresponds to an LED on this side of the board. And that way you can set one problem over here and then ask the system to mirror that problem over here. And uh, obviously that makes time setting the problems a lot easier and inputting them into the computer. Um, but it does mean that when you're actually installing the LEDs, you have to be a little bit careful. And the way that we do this is we tell the system to light up a specific LED on the left-hand side of the board. And then we can choose the corresponding LED on the right-hand side of the board and install that in the correct hole. So I'll show you what that looks like. I've just selected 
B17 and J17. And we can see that that now corresponds with this hole here. This is B17. And so J17 needs to go in there. Now I just need to go to the back of the wall and find the right hole. So now what I'm doing, once everything's installed and I'm pretty sure it's all right, I'm just going through the entire table, row by row, lighting up an individual row and then checking on the board for symmetry in the LEDs. So as you can see here, we've got the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, and then it should be symmetrical. So purple tailor made, small edge, curved edge, pinch, e hardwood thing. Perfect. And then I'll move back to the table. I will turn off all the LEDs in that line and turn on all the LEDs in that line and check again. Little smile, pocket, big resin one, weird Yora holds thing down to that one there. And then weird Yora holds thing, a big resin one, a pocket, yes Arthur, and then the smile. So again, that's all good. Yeah, mister, we're looking at the lights, aren't we? <laughs> no. No, there's no gravity up in space. So once all of your LEDs have been installed, um, they've all got these nice little lens caps on them, what you have to do next is to map the actual grid of the LEDs to the actual position of the holes. Because um, if you can imagine looking at this board right now, the LEDs will basically be in a very regular linear pattern going up one column, down another column, over the entire board. But obviously the holes themselves are not at all linear. So you're going to have some holes in the A column or actually over here. There's really big gaps between these first ones. There's a super high hole density around the middle. So you need to use the little computer to basically tell the LEDs which ones to light up when you want a certain hold. To do that, you get the guys from DTB to upload a current photo of your board. And then you can see all these crazy blue circles. You can see this one red circle here. This is the active LED that's currently being mapped. So I need, now need to go back to the picture and find this hold, tap on it. It moves that red circle to the correct hold. You want to make sure that it's nice and centralized on the hold as if you would when you're actually tapping on it to select a problem. And then you click next hold. Look on my board, it's that hold there. It's going to be this one. And then once that row is finished, you basically start all over again. Yes, it's a pretty exciting day because the board is all up and working. So over here, you can see one of the first problems it is lit up. I've started adding a few problems so far. I'm logged into the system, as you can see there. And so to create your own problems, we're going to go over here, click on create a new problem. And then it's just as simple as coming here, tapping holds. And then if I come back here, it should already be lit up. We click on save. I have to confirm a few things like that the starting holds are these two green circles. So I click on confirm. The red hold is at the finishing hold. I can click on confirm or if not, I can edit it or clear it or try something else. And then I just have to put in a name. I can add any comments there. And then here I can set the grade. And then finally, I can set which feet it uses. And on my board, because I have three sets of very, very different footholds, this means that I can assign specific footholds to each problem, and there'll be a corresponding LED that lights up on the board to tell people exactly which foothold they need to use. Pretty cool. So another really, really cool feature of this system is the ability to just mirror problems. And that's obviously because we've built a pretty much symmetrical board. There's a few non-symmetrical holds. But that's actually also one of the main advantages of this system is how adaptable it is for any board setup. So as long as I select a problem that has the symmetrical holds, I can very, very easily do that going to the left or going to the right. So as you can see here on the board, I've got this problem comes up from these starting holes. It's this little crimp here, long move up to this little crimp here, another little crimp in the middle and then the top. And if I, I tap on this mirror symbol, the problem's now switched. So little crimp on the left, then out right to this crimp, back into the middle and then to the top. You can see how it actually changes 
uh, on the board. Just looking at it right now, I can see there's actually a small issue going on here. When I mirror this problem, for some reason that top hold isn't mirroring. So I'm going to have to send a little message to Gareth at DTB because there must be just something slightly off there with the programming. Back on the board. It might be my last session before we leave for the winter in the south. And there we go. There is today's project. Did a little from yesterday. Let's see if today's the day. Oh. <sighs> 